Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and I'm going to make another video on rendering. We've already got one on Skill Builder, which has done pretty well, to tell you the truth, but we've got loads of abuse on it. I've got loads of abuse on it, let's be fair. I found out that plasterers are fundamentalists. They like to do things one way, and as far as they're concerned, there's only one God, their God. Now, what they were saying is they didn't like my trowel technique, they didn't like this, they didn't like that. Fair enough. Well, I was putting it on the wall. Now, I'm not saying that what I'm going to show you now is going to make you into a first-class renderer, but Jago, who is my glamorous assistant, uh, labourer come, very good craftsman actually, he's never done any rendering before. I gave him a trowel, gave him a hawk, showed him how to do it, and within 20 minutes he was putting the stuff on and quite honestly by the end of a couple of days of doing it I reckon he's pretty good so it just goes to prove you can learn it now we got a steel trowel that was another thing I got told off for calling this a float in actual fact it is sometimes called a steel float we've got a mix here which is a little bit sloppy, but that's no bad thing. It's not a hot day, so it won't go off too fast. You can look at my video on the best mix for rendering. I like to use a bit of lime in it and a bit of uh, sharp sand, but have a look at the video and see what you think. Now, what they told me off for, these different plasterers who were having a go at me, is doing this. Going from the bottom and just going up the wall like that. They said, no, 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 you mustn't do that. You've got to do this, which is to put it on that way and go down there and put it on like that. There's a lump in there, Jay. Go. Now, suit yourself but when you're doing the bottoms there I think it's as easy to do it like that and if you look around the world you'll see that there's many many different ways of putting render on the wall so it doesn't really matter although we've got loads of lumps in this Jay did you clean the top of that sand off or just, yeah. Somebody's been chucking lumps in our mix, which obviously doesn't help, especially when you come to the top coat. But you can see them there. We're gonna be picking those out all day long. Never mind. Anyway, this is what we call the scratch coat. We get the scratch coat on, reasonable thickness. You can see that what I do is to put the hook underneath so that I catch any slop that comes off, like so. So, we're gonna crack on with this. There isn't that much more to tell you about it at this point, except that these blocks Lightweight concrete blocks provide a pretty good key for rendering. If you're going onto other surfaces, you may want to use a scratch key the surface up, or you may even want to use a bit of SBR on it to get a bit of bond on it. But in actual fact, with this, it tends to stay on the wall. So Jay and I are going to work our way across, and we'll come back and see you in a minute.
Okay, so we've got some on the wall now. It didn't take too long at all, actually. And the next stage is we need to check whether it's flat because although you can get it smooth, if you don't get it flat, when the sun comes out and you get a raking light across the wall, you'll see all the humps and bumps. It looks like the surface of the moon. Now, even professional jobs that I've seen, some of them, you look at them and you think, my goodness, they just look, for a few hours of the day, they look absolutely terrible. It's a very harsh light, that raking light, so you can never get it absolutely smooth, probably, but you can do a lot better than this. And the way to do it is to take a straight edge. Now, this one is from Faithful. It's only about 20 quid. You could use a piece of timber for this, but how do you know the timber's straight? Whereas this thing we know is straight. So we can just run it across the wall, taking out the high spots. That's the important thing because we're gonna put another coat on this. And at that point, we could fill in any low spots, but getting rid of the high spots is more problematic because you'd have to start grinding them down. So it's important now, you can see we're just taking off that high spot in the middle and we'll just run this across here until we start getting a, a flatter surface. And you can immediately see by doing this just give it a little gentle soaring action there. You can immediately see where the hollow spots are. So you can see that's where the rule has missed it all together. And that needs a little bit of filling in just there. So now this is only the base coat. It's only what we call a scratch coat. And some people don't bother too much on the scratch coat. They'd rather just get it on the wall, scratch it up and get off home. <laughs> the trouble is, when you come back to do the top coat, your top coat is always thinner than your base coat because you're working into progressively weaker coats, not progressively stronger coats. And the way you do that is not by altering the mix, as some people do, but just by putting on a slightly thinner coat. And if the mix stays the same, the coat is weaker by default, if you like. So, when you see these plasters, they're going to be writing into me or comments below saying, I use four to one for a scratch coat and five to one for the top coat. If that top coat is thinner, it's not necessary to change the mix. Having said that, five to one, in most cases, is perfectly all right. So you can see we've got quite a thick, probably coming up to about eight millimeters of sand and cement on our top coat, on this base coat, this scratch coat. And the reason is that that block work has got loads and loads of grab on it, so we can do it. Now I'm gonna play around with this for a bit longer, but I'll just show you so that you can get off this little secret weapon here. This is from Rafina, and could do with a clean actually. But anyway, the important part are those serrated teeth. Now, and although this isn't really to scratch the surface up, what you'll find is that if you go across it like that, you'll immediately see where the low spots are. It will take off the high points. And you can see just by doing that, that actually you can identify those low spots and do something about them. Again, we're still picking up all these lumps of rubbish that were in the mix. If you go to your merchants, your builders' merchants, you're asking for sand. If you just ask them for rendering sand or plastering sand, as it's 
often known. You should get a much cleaner mix than this. So, quite what happened there, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna play like that. And the final thing we do, we don't rely on this as a scratch coat because when I see failure of one coat separating from the other, it's because the scratch coat isn't good enough. So what we do now is we use a scratcher, which you can buy from, this one comes from Selco. And we put in some nice scratch lines there for the top coat to go. Now, a lot of guys go like that. In actual fact, horizontal lines don't work as well as wavy lines. And the reason is that as that top coat, all sand and cement, it's got water in it, so it's going to shrink. And as it shrinks, it, you get tension on it. So if it's there and the top coat is on there and the top coat shrinks, it's going to pull in that direction. So it's kind of in the scratch coat, if you like, and it's pulling down. So what you then can end up with is vertical cracks because there's nothing stopping it that way. All the, all the grab is that way, if you like. So there's no grab that way. So you can end up with a vertical crack mark in the, in the render. So the way to avoid that is to do that. Now, you can see that as it shrinks that way, it's also shrinking that way. Just a small thing, and a lot of people have say to you, oh, that's a load of old nonsense. But, you know, people have worked these things out in laboratories and they do make a difference. And I'll tell you where they really make a difference, on air creep block. If you're rendering on air creep block, it actually says somewhere deep down in the manual for air creep blocks, always use wavy lines on the scratch coat. In actual fact, I would go further than that and say if you're rendering onto air creep blocks, they're the lightweight blocks, really lightweight blocks, then the thing to do is put in some fiberglass, some alkali resistant fiberglass mesh into that base coat and that will stop the cracking because if you don't, sure as eggs are eggs, it will crack. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with this and uh, come back and see us in a bit and we're gonna be doing the finished coat, which is the one that everybody judges you by. But a lot of the work, as I say, is in this base coat. So as you can see here, we've got ourselves a nice scratch coat on. Now you could actually go on the next day. A lot of people go on the next day if it's gone off enough, but we left this two or three days because we had other things to do. And although it's not the ideal weather out here now for rendering, because we've got such a good overhang here, there's no chance of any wash off. So we're gonna do this top triangle and finish the job off. Now, the second coat, you can do two coats or three coats, but we're gonna do two coats on this. And the second coat, is the one we get the smooth finish on. So I'm gonna show you how that works. The first part of it is just plain and simple, getting it on the wall like we did before. We've got a nice lime mix here. This is five parts of sand, one part of cement, and one part of lime. And if you've got any adhesion problems, then I would recommend that you use an SBR in it and the big problem we've got with this top coat is we've got tiny stones in the sand, which is gonna cause all kinds of problems for us. But we'll get it on, and then we spend all day picking out those little stones.
Now because we got this base coat nice and flat, we spent a little bit of extra time getting it nice and flat, this top coat should just go on absolutely smoothly. There shouldn't be too much need to start straightening it out with the straight edge, but we will run the straight edge over just to check it. Oh, blimey, Jay, look at that one. Look, that's a lump. Bit of an awkward place, bit of an awkward area to work in this. We did actually wet this wall off a little bit before we started, and because it's not too hot, we don't mind that little bit of suction. But if it was the summer, I'd soak this wall before I did it, a few hours before I did it, and then give it another soaking just before I did it. really started to chuck it down with rain now so I've made this little temporary shelter this little tent here just to protect this gable end because I thought this overhang would protect it but it's not enough it's driving in there so what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to rub it up and get it back to something like flat it's not ideal but I think I'll do it um, Jay's gone home there's no point in two of us hanging around waiting for this to go off and it's going off more in some places than others which is probably the worst thing you know because at one point you're rubbing up and you're getting somewhere and the next minute you're diving into the soft stuff but that's the way it goes I was a fool I should have waited till the good weather and done it but I wanted to get on so I'll bring it back it'll look all right in the end but it's going to take a bit of work what I've got here is the urethane float which I just used to take the high spots off and I've also got another really marvellous tool which is what they call a urethane derby and these haven't been out that long I first saw the Polish guys using these and I think the only reason we've got them in this country is because they kind of demanded them you know but what a great tool because you can just run it across there and you can see where the hollow spots are and you can move some of the high spots into the hollow spots so even if you've never done the rendering before you get yourself one of these and they're only about 18 quid i've got this one from tall station and um, you can see what you can do it just literally takes all the high spots off you've got to wait by the way don't do this too soon you've got to wait till it's really starting to firm up till you can push it but you can't actually get an indent into it and then if you do it too soon it will just take material off the wall but as you can see now and you can hear it it's just starting to get really gritty and I'll be able to run this round so when I've done that the final thing let me just show you excuse me one second here's the final thing that you need to do once you've got it's not quite there to do this yet but once you get it almost there don't do this too soon this sponging because if you do you'll just be getting bumps all over it and when the sun shines you'll see those bumps as a kind of ripple but as you can see that final thing with the sponge is rubbing all the 
material into the little hollows there and it will take all the blemishes out and we'll have the perfect finish ready so hopefully I'll get a chance to show you this again when the sun shines on another little bit but this is as much as I can do for this today is just to keep working it and rubbing it and from a distance I mean this is the top of the house so from a distance this will look perfect so now I've taken the cover off and it's just started to rain again so that's great but it's gone off enough now it won't wash off now it's um I think a very nice finish and actually a lot of the reason for that is because I use the lime in the mix cement and lime in equal parts and it gives you that lovely fatty mix and as you can see it really closes that surface up nicely and the great thing about lime is that if you do get hairline cracks in it it's what they call autogenous which means that it self repairs like the stalactites and stalagmites that lime leaches down into the cracks with the rainwater and it repairs itself so isn't that amazing anyway that's my effort at rendering bring on the comments plasterers i know you love it and i'll see you again soon don't forget to subscribe to skill builder because we've got an awful lot coming up in the near future press that little bell in the top right hand corner and you get an automatic update of everything that's coming up